Hey guys, it's uh, Sam for Digital Me, and um, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at getting point level animations out of Cinema 4D and into Unity. Uh, full disclosure, we are going to need a plugin for this. Um, well, it's a uh, it's a Unity asset. You can find it on their asset store, and it's this. It's called Megafires. And what this will do is actually able to take as a, um, well, we'll create a uh, file which holds the point data in it. And you'll need this plugin so that data can um, go into it. So I better get cracking then, explain what, I'm, what the hell I'm on about. So, okay, in Cinema 4D, let's set up a, a nice simple rig. Okay, let's get... Let's get this on. Let's create a sphere. And then I'm going to go into the spheres type and about an exa exahedron. It's pretty well rounded. Let's whack up the segment so there's a little bit more there to play with. 36 maybe. Yeah, I think that's good. That'll do us. Um, what else? <clears throat> okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my deformers here and choose the displacer. And that's going to go underneath the sphere. So this is a child of the sphere. That's gonna, what's going to be driving our animation. So uh, if we go into the shading tab, um, we've got a slot here for shader. Now I'm just going to drive our animation with noise. If I choose that, you can see that it's actually displaced the surface of the sphere now. Uh, but if we hit play, nothing happens. That's because we've got to go inside our noise and uh, scoot down to the animation speed. I'm going to set this to one, and uh, we can hit play, and there we have it. As you can see, that it kind of skips at the end there. Um, so let's have a look. Three seconds. So can I make our loop period three? And then maybe. Yeah, that seems pretty good. So if I make the animation speed two, will it still work? Yeah, it does. That loops rather nicely. Um, as you can see, our sphere looks a little bit. A bit jiggedy, so I'm gonna up the segments even more. See if we can get a a better result. That looks a little bit better, and we could may maybe make our height on our displacer a little less extreme, so it's a little bit more subtle. Maybe maybe something like this. That could be good. Let's have a look at it in uh, the ground shading. Okay, so we're getting some variation there. That's not bad. I mean, I suppose we could we could go up some. Let's try a hundred segments. Okay, we're getting some good definition in the, there now. Obviously, when you're uh, <clears throat> thinking about taking models into a game engine, you want to probably um, think about your poly count because it all matters. So you want to be as optimized as possible, really. But in this case, this is it really doesn't matter so okay we've got a looped animation now now I suppose to demonstrate what not to do I should I should uh, create a, a unity project quick so here we go blah 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 right let's create a new project uh, it's creating it in my documents in a folder that I've called unity project so let's just call this C4D underscore test. It's a 3D project. Create project. There we go. So our project's been created there. I'm just going to go into lighting. I suppose none of that matters actually. <clears throat> okay, so if we go back to our Cinema 4D scene. Um, I suppose we could put a plane in there for this to live on. Um, let's make it with a thousand. Okay, there we go. And 
actually to demonstrate the the uh, actually we don't need to worry about textures for the time being um, I'm just gonna make a couple of materials this one's gonna be called floor and I'll just give it a nice green color maybe something along these lines we'll pop that on there and uh, then we'll make another one call that sphere Um, let's make this a nice deep red. Maybe not that deep. There we go. That'll do us. Okay. And then we'll plop that on our sphere. Okay. Now we want our sphere so it's sitting on the floor. We go into the side view. I'm just click in the middle mouse button in there so I can swap between my views. Okay, and there's our scene. So, oh, excuse me, that's my phone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my documents. I'm going to go into Unity Projects, Cinema 4D Test, Assets. And in here I'm going to create a folder. I'm just going to call it Imports. So we got that. Go into there. I'm just going to call this test. And we're going to save. Uh, I'm going to call that test underscore C4D. You'll see why later. <clears throat> okay, so that's saved in there now. Go into Unity. There we go. We've got an imports folder. Remember when we save a C uh, Cinema 4D file. The scale factor is going to be off, so you've got to change that scale factor to 0 0.01, Ooh, which I didn't do. There we go. Then apply it. <clears throat> so let's have a think about that. We'll whack that in our scene, and there we go. We've got our we've got our ball in there. Now you can actually see that it's taken the deformer, even though this deformer shouldn't be read by unity it's taken the state of the sphere at the time of import so that's the reason that it actually looks like that okay so we've got this in but as you can see if we go into our um uh, model here and then look at this we've got our model information rig none animation none there's no animation data in there at all okay so on to the next bit, Cinema 4D. What I need to do is I need to, um, I'm gonna to go to my animation view and then I can show you. Then I'm gonna drag my sphere into the animation window. And what I wanna do now is actually bake the displacer animation onto the timeline. So if we go to functions, bake objects, um, you can see it already fills up from zero to three seconds. That's what we've got. Okay, so I'm gonna take off basic, I'm gonna take off all of this stuff. Um, and just explain why I'm choosing them. Clean tracks or whatnot. So basically, if there's a couple of keys next to each other, they've got exactly the same information. Uh, it cleans tracks up, basically. Um, so if you've got a bunch of keys, say you've got five keys and they're all, uh, they've got exactly the same information in terms of what you've clicked on in here. It will get rid of the sort of middle ones. It will clean the tracks up for you, which is good. Okay, so we want to leave that on. Um, I want point level animation on. If I click OK now, it is not going to do anything. You're not going to see any keys appear here. Um, and the reason for that is, is this hasn't actually got any points because it's a primitive object. You need to make it editable. So we're going to make that editable. Then we're going to choose that in here. Functions, bake objects. Again, we don't need any of this. We just need the point level animation. And there you go. It's baked out a load of keyframes there. So now, if we go back to our standard view, 
See a load of keys on the timeline there. This displacer we can actually kiss goodbye to. Um, you'll notice that there's actually a difference between this and when we get rid of the displacer. And it's because <clears throat> this displacer had a load of information on it. Then we bake that information down to the sphere. So now it's got the information on the sphere and then the displacer on top. So it almost doubles the effect, if you like. Um, and that's why there's a difference. But that is what we originally had. So you can see that movement there. Now, even though that these keys are, uh, keys are baked down to the keyframe, even if we were to save our file app back out again and go into Unity, see that it's detected a change, it's updating itself, it still doesn't hold any information. So, back to C4D we go. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is, excuse me, I'm going to um, I'm going to export as an FBX. So this sphere has now got its keys on the timeline. And we go here, export FBX. And then I'm going to just call this test, this one. Save out. Um, now I don't need any of this stuff. Lights, camera, splines. I mean, might as well leave one anyway, because there's none in there. So the track... Uh, Obviously, I definitely want the tracks out because it means that the other two are greyed out. So you definitely need your tracks. I don't do bake all frames, but I do need point level animation to vertex cache. Um, so that's all I need to do there. I'm going to click OK. Now, if I show you my documents folder now, wherever it is, you can see that in the assets, in the imports folder, it's created not only this test FBX, which I actually don't need anymore. The only reason I needed to um, export as uh, FBX is because it creates this test PLA folder. If we look inside of that, we can see we've got a sphere MC and a sphere XML. Um, we actually don't need the XML. The MC is the bit that we want. The XML is just some information, I think. Um, let's open it up with Notepad. Yeah, it just tells, it's just some information about about what came out there. So let's get rid of that. Um, we can get rid of the test FBX as well. Lovely. So now uh, we've got the uh, test PLA in there with our MC file in there. Right, so how do we attach our MC file? That's the bit that holds our uh, animation into our model. Okay, well, this is where the um, the Unity asset comes in. Um, so I'm going to go to Assets. I'm going to import a package, custom package. So obviously I've downloaded this uh, package, and here it is. So I'm just going to open that up. <clears throat> and choose all, import. Da, 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 da. Anytime soon, mate. Da, 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 da. Oh, I need to. Uh, I need to get the newer version, apparently. Yeah. Okay. I made a backup. Go ahead. Whatever you like. Okay. So is that it? Apparently so. Oh no, it's still having a good think. There we go. So is that it? Yeah, there we go. Um, so we need to select the object that we want the animation on. Go to component. I think uh, you'll get this, yeah. So, um, so basically this wasn't here before we put that asset in. So if we go to modifiers and then we're looking for uh, point cache. So dump a point cache in. And what it'll add is, it'll add two scripts. It'll do this mega modify object script. I mean, you can add that yourself if you like. And then it'll add this script, the mega point cache script. Okay. Okay, so we exported an MC file. It accepts PC2, MDD, and MCs. 
So we can click on this and it'll ask us where our MC animation is. So where do we want to go? C4D test, assets, import. There we go, our sphere MC. So we can load that in. Ooh, okay, that's interesting. Let's try it again. I wonder why that failed. It might be because let's have a look. Ah. That's why, because it, um, I, I put all this stuff, so it's my bad. It's a good lesson here, actually. We can remove these components. Um, we can remove this, and we can remove this, because I was putting it on the header that everything else was in. So you actually need to choose the sphere itself, then go to component, because obviously um, that point cache file uh, knows that the object that it was moving about has a certain amount of points and a load of the other stuff and obviously this object here is just a null and it doesn't share that it you know it will check against it and say oh it's got no points so this possibly this can't be this can't be an animation for this object so pick the sphere modifiers point cache it'll add all that stuff to the right object this time import mc Sphere MC, ba, 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 ba. there we go, it's mapping the vertexes, there we go, job done. Um, so the loop time is three, let's actually just set up our main camera a minute so we can um, get a decent view of our thing. Um, go back to our sphere. MOD enable, blah, blah, blah. Okay, look, let's just leave it as it is for now and um, hit play, see what we've got. And we've got nothing. And that's because, I'm gonna stop this by hitting the play button again. That's because uh, we need to check animated. So if we hit that now, there we go. We've got point level animation within Unity. Um, and as you can see, it's actually ping-ponging. It will get to sort of the end of the animation and then go backwards. Um, and then when it gets to the beginning, it will shoot forward again. But we can actually have it loop because we actually we actually made it. So it was a loopable animation. So there we go. So there we go. It's looping round. I don't think we've got any jump there either. No. It looks good to me, but... If we go back to our scene file, our scene view, you can see that it took all that information. It's working very well. And we've actually got some movement there inside Unity. Um, and that's basically it. That's basically how you get your um, point level animation or vertex animation into Unity from Cinema 4D. Um, it's a shame that it doesn't actually do this natively You'd think it would by now, but um, yeah, we've got to use that plugin, the uh, the Megafires plugin, available on the the Unity, Unity Asset Store. Um, but that is pretty much the only way you're going to do it. <clears throat> so, uh, as, as far as I know, anyway. So, uh, if anyone knows of another way, um, hit us up. I think there may be another method by. Uh, there's a guy called Cactus Dan. He may have made a way to actually export vertex animation out of cinema 4d but um i'm yet to look into that properly yet so anyway hope um this tutorial helped you guys out don't forget to check the uh youtube channel facebook page vimeo blah -de blah -de blah the website digitalmeet.uk um okay cheers guys bye